I didn't know if we were going to be able to get Jared Cannonier out here on set until I saw the post-fight interview, and he looked like he could run a four-minute mile after you done with that fight. You look great. I wish I could run a four-minute mile. <laughs> but I, feel, I do feel great, you know. Um, after going five rounds, uh, I feel good, you know what I mean? Um, our condition, my conditioning that I do at the MMA lab always gets me ready for these five-round fights. This here is my fifth main event, and... Uh, I'm happy to say that I never get tired in these things. Not at all. Yeah, real quickly, can I see your hands real quick? How do your hands feel? Can we get a close-up on these things? I mean, I thought you were going to have a broken hand. You beat the record. You crushed <laughs> the last record. And obviously, he has a tremendous, tremendously hard head. I mean, was there ever a point that you were thinking, am I going to injure myself? Do I need to go to the body? Do I need to implement the wrestling? Or do you just, just stay, let me keep head hunting? Because I know you guys, you and your camp, are really fishing for that first time to finish Marvin. Well, uh... You know, he hurt me first, you know? So yeah. uh, I just yeah. wanted to hurt him back it was, uh, <laughs> tenfold, you know what I mean? Um, but no, uh, it was a few shots that I hurt, hit him, hurt him with, and I can see it, and I just wanted to get that finish, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, I just wanted to get that finish. No, I never thought of my hands getting hurt, you know? Uh, we got some good hand wrappers here yeah. uh, and working for the UFC, so Tate, Tate's the man. He gave me a good, uh, he gave me the grappler's wrap this time. I asked for the grappler's wrap And that's wrap what I was going to ask you. So you told him to give him the grappler's wrap? I asked he didn't for the grappler's wrap. And you didn't wrap. break your hand. I'm... And I didn't break my hand. And I did some grappling, too, which is you one thing I'm really happy about. You good in it, man. Yeah. You looked good. You showed a very complete game. And look, I was listening to your interviews leading up to this fight. And you put a big emphasis on the strength conditioning. And me, I'm, an av I, I'm avid in the weight room. So what changes did you make? to your conditioning regimen that made you get to this next level? Because you've already had great conditioning. You never get tired, like you said. What changes did you make in your training camp to make you get up that next level? I didn't make any changes, you know. Um, I just kept going to the lab. I kept going to Aris uh, Sports Medicine. And uh, the uh, Al Escobar at Aris Sports Medicine and Jared Aki at, at the MMA lab gets us ready for these fights, you know. Um, it's one thing that I say to all the new guys coming in. If you want to get lab ready, you got to go work out with Jared. You know what I mean? That guy, that guy gets us ready. He gets us ready for three or five, uh, five rounds. So um, that he's the man. You know what I'm saying? That's the guy who I go to for my conditioning. I go to Al Escobar at Air Sports Medicine for my strengthening and, and other aspects of physical fitness and uh, all kinds of information I get from those two individuals who help me get ready for these, uh, these wars. It really is hard to pick apart anything that you did wrong in this fight, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because we were talking about when you switched to the southpaw stance because yeah. you wanted to land that leg kick, you were taking more damage. Did you guys talk about that in the corner? And then you ended up switching back, but you went back to southpaw for a minute. What was going through the head there? Well, uh, we had some. We had a game plan set in, in, in motion from both stance, both stances, and. Um, I did work a few of the techniques I did from uh, from Southpaw, but uh, Marvin Vittori exploited some vulnerabilities from that um, from that position. And my corner was definitely telling me at the end of the first round, let's let's stay out of let's stay out of uh, stay out of Southpaw, let's stay uh, let's stay open stance. And uh, you know, I just wanted to hurt him. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it, it comes at a point to where in these rounds, the guy sort of picks up on your timing, picks up on the techniques you're using, and I just wanted to keep it. Uh, Keep him confused, keep him off kilter, and him not be able to read everything I was trying. So um, I felt the need to switch every now and then, and um, I survived. <laughs> that you did. No, you look great, man, showing a lot of versatility, switching stances, the wrestling. I mean, you look phenomenal tonight. I mean, a ton of hearts, especially getting out of that first round that you were hurt. Moving forward, man, you're, you're 39 years old. I was in a position too, 39. My last fight was around 39 years old. How much do you feel like, like your back's against the wall? Like, do you feel the pressure? that you need to pr go, go, go? Or do you feel like you still have some longevity in the sport where let's say they say you won't be fighting for six months. Would you sit back and wait or do you feel like the need to fight immediately right now? Well, I just, the last, my last fight was six months, was six months ago. We've seen the, uh, the progression the that I've made. We see the improvements that I've made. If, uh, if I have to sit down another six, if I have to sit out another six months, sit out of the octagon another six months, I'm not gonna be sitting down another six months. We're gonna be training. We're gonna be building off of all the things we built on to get to this fight and, all, and make all the different improvements we need from watching this fight, you know, from having this fight. So this is just, um, I don't really think, I don't feel like I need to rush, you know, because I'm 39 years old. Um, I don't take too much damage in my fights. I don't take too much damage in, um, in my training. So um, I feel good, you know. I, I know I'm not as 
young and dumb as some of these other fighters in here, but that, I find that as an advantage of myself, you know what I mean? So um, I don't put any limits on myself. I don't put any time limits. I don't see the uh, old red retirement line uh, stripe down there. I, I'm, not, I'm not even thinking about it. I don't even think about it. So I just, the next fight, that's what we talk about. And that's, that's one of our sayings. That's one of the things coach says to us all, uh, all the time. It's all about the next fight. Now we did this, good job, or we need to learn from whatever, if, you know, if anything bad happens from it, but it's all about the next fight. So we're gonna pick up from, what, uh, we're gonna pick up from tonight and get on to the next fight. You know, I wanna talk about the next fight because a lot of people have said UFC 290, Robert Whitaker and Drake is Duplissy is the un, it's like the un, it's the unlabeled uh, title one eliminator. Like, title yeah. eliminator. Yeah. Yeah. You've just won back to back main events. And I know that you felt the urgency to finish this fight to cement your spot as the next contender. Look, this was one of your best performances today. Do you think that this is enough to leapfrog Robert? Because he has, whoever wins that fight, it's a fast turnaround. You have more time to prepare, you're fresh, you just pocketed a, a, one of your best wins to date. Do you think that you could be the next guy? Absolutely, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain that my name is in the forefront of those guys' mind. Dana, Mick, Sean, Hunter, whoever makes those decisions. I'm sure my mind, uh, after this last performance, those guys were like, okay, you know, maybe we'll have him as an alternate or if something yeah. happens, we're definitely gonna have his number on speed dial. Um, and that's what I wanted out of this performance. If not, we need to get him in there, forget those other two guys. If not, I want my name to be in the forefront. I wanted to show them that I'm prepared, that I've done the work, and uh, it's not gonna be like last time, that's for damn sure. So um, I'm ready, man, I'm ready to get my title. That's for damn, that's, that's for certain. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you showed it, man. I mean, I don't even wanna hear anybody say you're 39 years old anymore. You look like you're 29 years old. Tom Brady played till he was like 47 years old. I mean, you, you, you're gonna be fighting for five, six more years. You were mm -hmm. unbelievable. <laughs> you did everything you wanted to do inside that octagon tonight. A very impressive performance, my friend. You have my vote for fight of the year. I don't have a vote, mm -hmm. but if I did, that would be my vote. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.